Now on SUTV News, many students may not know about it, why the Research and Technology Park is receiving a lot of attention elsewhere. Bringing college students in the community together, what people in North Fargo are saying about the Good Neighbor campaign. And in sports, the Bison get ready to take on the Minnesota Golden Gophers. North Dakota U.S. Senator Kent Conrad is calling the work they do world class. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us. I'm Brandon Clark. The Research and Technology Park here at NDSU is grabbing attention nationwide and worldwide. Senator Conrad toured the park on Saturday. He was shown several of the research projects students, faculty, and outside companies are working on. A couple of the projects include working on a substance to put on the bottom of naval ships so barnacles won't stick and bed nets for soldiers that are water and insect repellent. Senator Conrad wants to make sure everyone knows what is happening here in North Dakota. There is a real gap between what's occurring here and people's understanding of what's happening at NDSU. That's one of the reasons I wanted to come back so that I can carry the message uh, in a more compelling way to my colleagues. During the show, Tony Grinberg, the executive director of the Research and Technology Park, will join us and explain more about the research and advancements they're doing. And the numbers are in. NDSU's official student enrollment has leveled off. 14,399 undergraduate, graduate, and professional students enrolled this fall. This compared to 14,407 students last year. President Dean Brashani says that enrollment holding steady in spite of efforts to moderate enrollment suggests how in demand NDSU has become. And it's a night to bring students and their neighbors in the community together. Students stop at houses in the Roosevelt neighborhood bordering NDSU and introduce themselves to homeowners. SUTV News followed this year's Good Neighbor campaign and got a look at what it's all about. For close to 30 years, Lois Crokey has lived in this neighborhood and thinks most of the kids are great. They're young, they're in energetic, and I remember when I was in college. <laughs> She's had minor issues. When they took my 133 off and I figured somebody over at the dorm needed a 133. But she's not afraid to call them out. If I had a problem with the DU or the, the other ones that over the SU, so whatever they are, I would walk over and I would say, hey, you know, cut this out. And what Lois is not afraid to do is exactly what the Good Neighbor campaign is for. And make people comfortable going and talking to their neighbors and dealing with issues that way. Greek Life members and student government leaders teamed with the Roosevelt Neighborhood Association. Going door to door, they talked to homeowners, thanking them for inviting students into their community and giving them information with who to call if they do have problems. And we've actually had stories of it going both ways where students have issues with long-term residents. While many people like Lois haven't had major problems. I just want to take away from it that they have this open uh, means of communication between campus and just if there's any problems relate it back to us or student government. Ultimately this campaign is about working together to create a welcoming environment for a mix of families and students. Between the students and members of the Roosevelt Neighborhood Association 40 people knocked on about 700 doors. And a full house filled the festival concert hall on Tuesday night. Students came to hear speaker Sue, John, Sue Jo John, a survivor of the 9-11 terrorist attacks. He was trapped under rubble with 15 others on the 81st floor of the World Trade Center Tower No. 2. He and another man were the only ones who survived. After struggling through debris and people for an hour and a half, John made it down to the ground level. John is touring and sharing his story nationwide of how his faith saved him. So I'm able to share my story and use that story as a tool to challenge people to think about what it would be like, you know, when they would be one day walking in my shoes, the fact that life is short and one day, you know, you and I will get caught up facing that moment of death. John's story has been covered by the New York Times, the BBC, the Associated Press, and several other national and international media. Man, that's quite a story. But when we return, Tony Grinberg, the executive producer of the Research and Technology Park, is here to talk more about Senator Conrad's visit and the ins and outs of what they're doing up there.
SUTV News is being brought to you by Stop and Go. Stop and Go. We're always there. Jimmy John's, America's favorite sandwich. Delivery guys. Total is $472. How do you want to pay for that today? I have a few different cards I want to put it on. There is an easier way to do this. Book charging and rentals. Only at the NDSU Bookstore. Welcome back to SUTV News. Joining me now is Tony Grinberg. He's the executive director of NDSU's Research and Technology Park. He's here to tell us about some of the research that's going on and kind of the business side of things at the park. Some of the research that they're doing is really setting NDSU apart on a national and international level. Tony, thanks for being with us Great here. Great to be here, Brennan. Now, uh, Senator Con Ken Conrad actually just toured mm -hmm. uh, this past Saturday some of, the, some of the labs there, and he said, what some of the research being done is, quote, world-class work. Uh, what can you tell me about what Conrad has to say and what he can help do for the park? Well, clearly Senator Conrad's commitment over the years has been steadfast in support. And, and really the, um, the uh, research engine at NDSU over the last decade has um, grown tremendously. And a, a large part of that growth has been around uh, national interests um, that, that find their way into materials and electronics, particularly with Department of Defense work. And so uh, as our nation moves forward uh, in a globally competitive um, environment, uh, maintaining a competitive edge with whether it's military purposes or other needs um, in, in the federal government, um, you know, it's helped drive the research portfolio at NDSU. And so, um, you know, often it, those ideas or those um, products have to be developed somewhere. Uh, the uniqueness of what we've been able to carve out here is it happening in North Dakota at NDSU. Now you mentioned some of the military things. There's there's a lot of research being done in, in the military fields, whether it's through uh, the Navy or, or right. actually soldiers. One of the big things is, is they're working on a marine coating, a substance that will prevent barnacles from sticking to the bottom of naval ships. Uh, what can you tell me about that and, and how will that help out the Navy and, and NDSU being able to work with the Navy? Well, it's a, it's a great example. I mean, who would think that um, um, when there's no coast uh, in North Dakota, per se, with Navy ships, um, that that type of research is going on here in North Dakota. Um, but in particular, NDSU is one of the flagship materials science department research entities in the nation. And so having that reputation and that department that's over 100 years old um, really has proven itself over the years. And so as, 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 as a as a request from the federal government to um, reduce barnacle drag on, on mil or military, uh, Navy ships, uh, it'll increase efficiency and better fuel economy. By 40%, because yes. right now they're losing 40% efficiency. And so typical with federal investment in research that ultimately those new innovative ideas find their way in the commercial marketplace. Well, imagine all other yachts and boats around the world that are you know, a technique or a device to be able to keep um, you know, barnacles off the hulls of ships will only improve efficiency and less wear and tear and, and improve all of the fleets around the world. And now Senator Conrad also uh, went to over to the technology incubator, which another big project is being worked on, the bed nets, which I understand are going to be sent over to uh, the soldiers to be able to use. What can you tell me about that? They are 
supposed to be water repellent and insect repellent? Yeah, it's, it's a material that was developed um, at NDSU in the Material Science Department. And um, the partner, um, Triton Systems out of Chelmsford, Massachusetts, was intrigued by the new technology to be able to um, you know, apply pesticides or an insect repellent into uh, warfighter bed nets, warfighter uniforms. And that technology is now being deployed in partnership with a company that's moved a branch office uh, into North Dakota from Massachusetts, partnering with the university um, and NDSU material science, and then uh, manufactured across the state to make these devices. And so what we think is going to happen over time is obviously that need is going to be met for the federal government and the military, but as well um, other applications in the commercial marketplace. Athletic apparel, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, imagine um, hunting uniforms with um, the insecticide in, so when you're out bow hunting, you know, you won't get bit by mosquitoes. That'd be a great benefit. <laughs> well, uh, so now, there, there's all these different re research projects going on. What are the benefits to having the research technology park and the incubator all close together and, and having it in North Dakota? Well, one of the advantages the individuals who start companies or companies that uh, have a presence in the park is the proximity to the campus. It's, it's vital. Um, student interchange, um, daily um, opportunities for faculty and scientists to work alongside industry. Um, it really makes a difference when they're right on the, the same boundary, if you will. Um, and so the research park at NDSU, which is 11 years old, um, is modeled after best practice of many parks in the country. There's approximately 200 research parks in the United States. And in our case, uh, we also offer an incubator and entrepreneur center. And um, that allows the, the entrepreneurs who have an idea in a technology arena to um, partner um, with NDSU, readily available students with talent and the, and the technology and the knowledge that exists in various departments. So it's a win-win. Senator Conrad called this world-class, and it truly is world-class, but I'm not sure a lot of people on the national and international level know, and in fact, I'm sure not a lot of NDSU students know what's out there. What can you guys do to gain the awareness and to let people know, hey, we are, we're doing some impressive things here? Well, we continue to look um, at ways to tell our story. You know, next Saturday on Homecoming, we'll have an insert in the Fargo Forum that gives a comprehensive review of everything going on in the park. Uh, we look through our partners at the Economic Development Office locally to the state, as well as the university's, um, you know, ties and networks in, in various trade associations, material science or electronics, continuing to talk about what we do and um, so that additional companies, for example, will know the strengths and the knowledge that exists here and, and look to us for partners, which equates to opportunity. Now, you know, now being here at NDSU, we talk a lot about uh, the students. It's, it's all about the students. Now in such a tough economy, it, it's already tough to get a job, but what is the research and technology park doing for, for jobs for NDSU students and, and doing for jobs for, for other people that would want to get involved? We have a number of programs um, on any given day during that traditional academic year. We have a number of students through um, scholarship programs that applies opportunity for students to work for some of our startup companies as well as be involved in uh, um, some of the other anchor tenants in the park. And so it's, it's a continual flow of um, providing opportunities to um, the students who maybe want a technical position and want to become a scientist or um, work in a, in a startup setting to launch a new company. Um, so it's a, it's a, you know, 10 years ago there were no employees in the research park. Today there's just under um, 900. And, and some and of the some of the students were talking about how, or, or some of the uh, advisors there were talking about how students are actually getting royalties for some of the projects they're working on. Certainly, if they're working involved with the lab as far as a new technology device, they'd be involved with that um, on, a, on a technology transfer opportunity as well. So uh, it's really it's really a great opportunity yeah. if you if you want to get a job, yeah. especially in such a tough market. The next Bill Gates could be sitting on campus right now. <laughs> Alrighty, well, thank you for uh, joining us you here, Tony. Brandon. We appreciate it, and, and wish you guys the best of luck with everything up there. Still ahead on SUTV News, we'll have more. With MatBus being the easiest, greenest, and most efficient way to get around North Dakota State University, there are tons of reasons to MatBus. I MatBus to get to class on time. I don't have to use my car, waste gas, or waste time finding a parking spot. I MatBus because their hybrid buses not only help our community and the state, but they're also helping our world. I MatBus not only to get around campus, there are many reasons to map bus. Come find yours. Join your herd. Be map bus strong.
Jimmy John's, America's favorite sandwich. Delivery guys. The bookstore held a book signing Tuesday. Students met authors of a book who were all victims of either abuse or sexual assault and wanted to give hope to their readers. They shared their stories to let people know they're not alone. Books were free while supplies lasted and were autographed by the authors. There have been other book sightings around college campuses, local bookstores, and a few Barnes and Noble locations. So far, they have toured in the cities of Bismarck, Minot, and Fargo. And here's a look at some things happening on campus. There's an ongoing effort to assist Minot in recovery from its devastating flood. The NDSU Staff Senate has built a Rebuild Minot campaign. Items are being collected to be delivered to the city. The drop-off site is between student activities and the student government offices in the Union. And you can learn about studying veterinary medicine in the Caribbean. September 27th at 7 p.m. in the Hidatsa Room of the Memorial Union, Ross University College of Veterinary Medicine will provide information about how to do this. Other campus visits for the college include the University of Missouri and the University of Minnesota. And President Brashani will give the annual State of the University address September 29th at 11 a.m. in the Festival Concert Hall. This is his second address during his administration. He was named NDSU's 14th president on May 24th, 2010 by the State Board of Higher Education. Well, certainly the thing in sports to talk about is Bison football against the Gophers. Yeah, it's here. It's been uh, quite a time since we've had that last game. Bison upset the Gophers last time. It's going to be a fun one. We'll talk about that game coming up next in sports. to do this. Book charging and rentals only at the NDSU bookstore. Jimmy John's, America's favorite sandwich. Delivery guys. The Bison are up against Illinois State at homecoming this Saturday, October 1st at 1 p.m. Sponsored by Subway. Tickets call 231-NDSU. SUTV Sports is being brought to you by Shields. Ready for your next big adventure? Welcome to Shields. Welcome back. September 24th, 2011 has been circled on the NDSU football calendar for quite some time. Ever since the Bison stunned the Gophers with a 27-21 victory in 2007, both teams have been hungry for a rematch. SUTV's Matthew Kurtz explains why this weekend's matchup is especially important for the Bison. North Dakota, Minnesota, the Bison versus the Gophers. Does the matchup mean something more for NDSU? There's not a game that I want to win more than the other. The game is the game. Uh, you know, we're, gonna, we're looking forward to bigger things. It's the answer you'd expect to hear from a competitor, but Bison tight end and Minnesota native Matt Veldman has quite a different answer. 
There's, it's, uh, it's definitely a bigger game for me. Um, all, you know, I'm kind of the generic response is all games are important. Uh, this one does have a little bit more significance. Uh, growing up kind of in the shadow of the dome, uh, my old man has season tickets for the Gophers, and my grandpa's been, uh, has season tickets for about 50 years now. So I definitely have a chip on my shoulder, and I can say the same for everyone else from Minnesota, too. When NDSU lost to the Gophers by one point in 2006, Veldman unexpectedly got his first exposure to the green and gold. On the, fir the first time we played the Gophers, I was in the stands as a Gopher recruit. So uh, that was really my first taste of Bison football was at that game, and I remember walking away really impressed. Uh, with the Bison program. Veldman thought he'd be a gopher, but in 2007 he found himself a red shirt for the Bison and was on the sidelines for the big NDSU victory at the Dome. Fast forward four years and now Veldman will take the field as a Bison captain and starter at TCF Bank Stadium, where plenty of Bison fans are expected. But despite how much green is in the stands on Saturday, Feldman and company know that fans don't win football games. We have to you know, get the job done. You know, all the Eventually, it's gonna, that emotion's gonna run out. You know, it's gonna run out, and we just gotta get the job done. I, I don't care who's the favorite. Um, all that goes out the window. We're just gonna look at the scoreboard at the end of the game and see how we did. I'm Matthew Kurtz, supporting for SU TV Sports. The Bison enter the matchup 2-0, coming off a bye week last week. The Gophers come in at 1-2, coming off a win against Miami of Ohio at TCF Bank Stadium. Well, after sweeping West Illinois to open their conference season, the Bison volleyball team met IUPUI, a team the Bison have dominated with a perfect 10-0 record. But the Jaguars, who returned five starters from last year's team, came in hot, having won five of their last seven. The Bison opening conference play at the Benson Bunker Fieldhouse. First set tied at two. Carissa Whalen, a good swing, returned. Christy Canute cleans it up for the kill, and the Bison lead 3-2, but the Jaguars too much to handle in the first set. 24-22, Bryn Jokey blocked at the net. The Jaguars take the first set, 25-22. Megan Lambertson has been sidelined for four games with an ankle injury. She comes back in the second set in a big way. Jokey with the hard kill, played back out of bounds. The Bison win the set, 25-16. This one would go to five sets. Lambertson finished with 16 kills, five in the fifth set there. A big one, and the Bison win the set 15-13. They win three sets to two. Ready, one, two, three. In the Bison soccer, taking on the University of Nebraska Omaha Mavericks. Abby Stratton, the long throw in. Holly Christian gets ahead on it, and the Bison go up 1-0 in the first half. To the second half, Munkadick and Christian weren't done. Munkadick, the corner kick. Holly Christian going up above everybody else, getting the header. The Bison lead 2-0. They go on to win by a score of 3-1. to one. The Bison took on Drake on Thursday. They picked up a win in that one as well. So the Bison 2-0. and oh. They will play UND on September 25th. That game can be seen on SUTV Channel 84. The Bison men's golf team competed in the annual Irv Kaiser Invitational this week. The Bison were part of five schools competing in the two-day tournament. Oxbow native freshman Trent Olson won the tournament, shooting an even par 72 in the final round. Junior Nathan Anderson finished third with a 223. Manitoba took the team title, shooting a final round 299. The Bison will play in the Cleveland State Invitational October 3rd. I've been hitting the ball pretty good, but not putting so well, and we've got great captains for me to learn from and look up to. This year is really going to be an interesting year. The, the, the balance of our team from, you know, one through eight is just incredible. These guys are battling it out every day in practice for, you know, positions on the traveling squad and, and the depth of our, our squad has really improved. Well, certainly the, uh, the, the biggest name in, or the biggest thing in sports this week is definitely going to be the Bison go for football game. Yeah, I mean, a lot of fans are going to fill that stadium. It's the first time they've played in the stadium. Of course, the game in 2007 was in the Metrodome, so this will be the first time they played in TCF. The Gophers struggling, the Bison coming in hot. We got DJ back. It's going to be a one-two combo be between a, him and Ojuri. It's going to be a great time. Well, stick with us. We're going we're gonna to preview uh, the Bison Gopher game one last time after the break with a look at what you're doing for the game. There is an easier way to do this. 
book charging, and rentals, only at the NDSU Bookstore. Jimmy John's, America's favorite sandwich. Delivery guys. The Bison are up against Illinois State at homecoming this Saturday, October 1st at 1 p.m. Sponsored by Subway. For tickets, call 231-NDSU. Welcome back. Well, Ryan, the Bison Gopher game is already one of the most talked about games of the year. And as we heard in, in your sports segment, that it's going to be one to please. But not all of us can make it to Minnesota, so we went out on campus to find out what your plans are for the big game. In Gopher game uh, with Bison Ambassadors, we're going to kick their butts. Uh, it's going to be a good time. Um, I'm definitely planning on watching it because I'll actually be at the game. Got a spot in the um, Minnesota side, so that'll be good, going with a lot of friends. And I think it's going to go real good. I think we're going to just knock them, out of the, knock them out of the stadium. Uh, I definitely will be watching the game on Saturday, and uh, I'm a Bison, so of course we're going to win. I kind of think NDSU's got a fair shot at winning just because they've been so good the past couple of weeks. There's certainly a lot, of ho a lot of hope for the Bison to win this one and a lot of predictions as to who is going to win. Yeah, the thing to do, stop quarterback Marquise Gray, 6'4", 240 pounds. There aren't very many players in this country who can run and pass like that. I'm so. not sure we can stop him, but we can certainly try to, just contain him. try to contain him. But, you know, speaking of predictions, there's, there's a lot of them out there. And even Senator Conrad, who we talked to a little bit earlier in the broadcast, had a prediction. Here's what he had to say. I'm with the bison 100%. As you know, uh, my wife went here undergraduate and graduate. She's a proud NDSU alum, and she doesn't hesitate to tell people that we meet uh, everywhere we go that she went to NDSU. Score. How about a score? You know, I think it's going to Well, uh, he, he actually predicted that it's going to be a 28-0 skunk. That's uh, pretty bold. <laughs> it's a pretty bold prediction, but who knows? We'll see. There's, there's a lot of talent on the Bison team, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of talent for the Gophers. It's, I mean, it's anybody's best guess right now. Definitely. Well, thanks for joining us on SUTV News. For more news, don't forget to pick up your copy of the NDSU Spectrum. We'll see you again next time. <laughs>